Hello, I'm Michael Smith, and we are doing a bunch of basic tutorials on procedural textures and how they work that'll hopefully make some of the other things I'm doing a little bit more accessible. In the last tutorial, we briefly talked about the basic concepts of a texture coordinate system and the function that we use to map that to values, in this case, color, to create procedural textures. This is where we ended in the last tutorial. If you want that file, it's linked from the old tutorial, uh, and you can watch the old tutorial to catch up with where we are. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is talk about the different kinds of coordinate systems. The one we picked last time is the UV coordinate system. What is that? So the UV coordinate system is a flat coordinate system that involves taking the object that you have, projecting it onto a flat surface, and then picking the coordinates from the flat surface and using those as the coordinates that go through your function. I'll show you what that means in a minute. In this case, what we have is a flat plane. So this is not very exciting. The flat plane, uh, we just map the Y in the Y direction, the X in the X direction. And if you want to figure out what the coordinate of anything in this plane is, you just take how far is it up the Y axis, how far is it along the X axis, and that's your X and Y, uh, really basic. Uh, but what if you had a different shape? So um, the way that we can see what's going on here, let's put a cube in instead. So I'm going to left click on my plane. I'm going to hit X to delete, and then I'm going to go to add mesh cube. Uh, I'm going to go down here and select the material from the last tutorial. So now we get our nice waves. And now you can see, hmm, it's a little funky here. Maybe that makes a bit of sense. But how did it decide where to put the waves? What, what values are going in here? So to find that out, what we're going to do is switch over here to the UV editing window. Um, the other thing I'm going to do quickly is move this over so I can change it to shading. Uh, viewport shading so we can actually see the texture in this mode. Okay, so with that, what we have here is this side is in editing mode. If you don't know what that is yet, uh, we'll talk about that somewhere else. Uh, but basically it lets me select, rather than just the whole objects, the vertices and faces and edges of that object. And on the left-hand side, this is the flat plane. So the same way you may have made, you know, made a paper cube, you flatten it out into a, a pattern, you cut out the pattern and you stitch it together. That's what's happening here. So I've gone into the right side, pressed A to select all. Currently I'm selecting vertices. And you can see that this looks exactly like if you've ever done as a craft project, one of those unfolded 3D cubes that you fold up and make into an object. That's what it does. It's just taken this, flattened it out by faces, put it on your texture. And when it's deciding how to map the texture, this is your coordinate system, zero, zero here, Y goes that way, X goes that way, one, one over here. Uh, when it's trying to decide what to draw on, let's say the top face, so I'm going to go in the top here, select face selection and select just the top face. Uh, so any point on here, it's going to take the point in visual space, map it to this square, uh, find the point within that square, and then find that coordinate within this square, and that's the coordinates using for the texture. So if you look at that, you can tell the waves uh, are going this way, so it's going black, white, black, white in this direction, uh, and ignoring uh, the change in this direction, um, and this square is picking up those coordinates. Um, so we can also uh, demonstrate this, for instance, if you select those, we can use G for grab, like you would uh, for objects and you can move it around and you can see it changing uh, press escape to cancel R for rotate and you can see as we rotate it maps to different points there escape to cancel and that's the basic idea uh, we're not going to get into the full details of how to do UV unwrapping for complicated objects that's a different topic um, but if you want to know for an object uh, if you use the UV map how is that UV map going to decide where the points are in your procedural texture this is how you can go see in UV editing. Um, there are a couple other options I'll show you briefly just to demonstrate what this looks like. Uh, you can go in here and unwrap it different ways. So I've selected A to select all the faces. If I go to UV uh, and for instance, do cube projection. So this is a cube that should work. Uh, what that's gonna do, I'll select a face here. All the faces just map to the full range of the texture. Um, if this was more of a uh, cylinder, object. So if it if it was like, I don't know, a tree trunk or something, uh, then you could try cylinder projection. Obviously, it's not going to work so well uh, here for a cube. Uh, there's also uh, UV uh, sphere projection, again, not a sphere. And then uh, UV smart UV project, which usually does quite a good job. Uh, and that's a variation kind of, of what we saw at the beginning. So there you have it, UV coordinates. 
uh, how they're translated, how they translate the three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional coordinate, and how that maps to your procedural your procedural texture. Thanks.